Greetings and welcome to my channel if you're new, you newly subscribed. I will be talking about Solomon, Soleiman, Solo Man, Uno Man, the one man that has created the nation of Islam. That is the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. And the type and shadow of him was Solomon. Now, in 1 Kings chapter 4, 29 through 34, it goes into how Solomon was the wisest man on the earth. According to the Bible, Solomon was the wisest man on earth. We know that the Bible calls Jesus a man. That is in John 840. That is in Acts chapter 2, verse 22. He is called a man. If he's called a man, he can't be God. That's just the honest truth. Going on. The wisest man on earth, which is Solomon had issues with women, and he worshipped other gods. Now, Solomon is a type and shadow of the prophet Muhammad, as well as David. Types and shadows is what guards us from Bible corruption, and types and shadows also see pictures of things before they actually happen. Like we had a picture of Jesus. Right in the story of Joseph. Before there ever was a Jesus. There was a copy of him. And it was the truth about him. He did not die. It was a big line. Okay. Going on. You're going to know that I teach type and shadows. Types and shadows is the Solomon concept. There is nothing new under the sun. Everything that is has been already. Now, we know for a fact, according to the scriptures in 1 Kings 11.5, Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians. So, this other god that Solomon went after was a A, Ashtoreth. Ashtoreth was the moon goddess of the Phoenicians, representing the passive principle in nature, their principal female deity. So going on to say that Ashtoreth was a moon goddess. Now, what are the odds that the type and shadow of Solomon is Mohammed and he is accused of worshiping a moon god? They say Allah is a lunar deity, refers to the postulation that Allah, the name of God in Islam, originated as a moon god. The claim first arose in 1901 in the scholarship of archaeologist Hugo Winkler, who identified the name Allah with a pre-Islamic Arabian deity known as La Hubal, which he called a lunar deity. So the type and shadow of Muhammad worshipped other gods and the first god he went after was the moon goddess. And we have an accusation of of the prophet Mohammed worshiping another god which is called the moon god whom they say is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now we know for a fact that Allah is the one and only true god but I'm just showing you how Solomon was a picture of Mohammed because he worshiped other gods and Mohammed is accused of worshiping another god not only that solomon his name means peace and muhammad peace be upon him he introduced that custom that was lost that the israelites had and that was wishing peace peace be upon him such and such solomon means peace
peace going on. Shiloh. Shiloh means the peaceable one. And Shiloh also means to whose right it belongs. You see, the scepter of the kingdom always belonged to the prophet Muhammad. He was the final messenger. He was the prophet like unto Moses. And in Genesis 49, 10, it indicates that the scepter would pass from the children of Israel and it would go to a Gentile messenger and he would be a mercy for all of humanity. That could only be the prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. Now we know that the Christians stole Jesus, but Jesus was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That is seen in Matthew 10, 24. Going on. Not only is Solomon a type and shadow of Mohammed, but David is a type and shadow of Mohammed. When we think of David, David had a reproach with women, just like Solomon had a reproach with women. And Mohammed has a reproach with women. Now, that's the truth. That is the truth I'm bringing out. There's so much more on the types and shadows of David, and I have videos on that. You can watch types and shadows in my video listing. Going on, Solomon was a picture of Mohammed. Think about it. Solomon, Solomon. The real man of peace. And we know for a fact that the prophet Mohammed was the true Shiloh. Okay. He brought mercy by God's leave, by Allah's leave, to all of mankind. Solomon's reproach was women. Mohammed's reproach was women. Solomon worshipped other gods and Mohammed was the first person to worship Allah as recorded in scripture. Now we know that all the prophets were Muslims, but according to the Quran, Mohammed reintroduced to us Allah and the world calls him another god, the moon god. Moses split the Red Sea. Solomon's kingdom was split, okay? And Solomon was about to split the baby in half. What did Muhammad do? Peace be upon them all. That has to do with splitting. Muhammad split the moon. As you can see the picture, I have it up. The hour has drawn near and the moon was split in two. Yet, whenever they see a sign, they turn away, saying, same old magic. Quran 54, 1 through 2. Now, they thought Moses' miracles were magic as well. This is in Exodus 8, 19. Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, this is the finger of God, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had said, when the magicians could not duplicate the plague, they acknowledged that it was an act of God. So that whole time, they thought what Moses was doing was magic. Now, Deuteronomy 18 and 18 talks about a prophet like Moses because God is the author of the types and shadows. There's healings in the types and shadows. Just think of Peter. When they came under his shadow, they were healed. And when we go under the types and shadows of Joseph and all of these Bible characters, there's healing in them. Okay? There's copies of the original in these types and shadows. What did Jesus split? 
in half? What did David split in half? There's no way for you to say that Jesus is that prophet like Moses, peace be upon him. The prophet like unto Moses is the Solomon, the solo man, the one man. And that prophet is Mohammed, peace and blessings be upon him. These signs follow only the prophet like Moses. Moses split the Red Sea. Moses split the rock. Exodus 17, 6, Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Oreb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it that the people may drink, and Moses did so in the sight of the elders. Now I have pictures of what we believe is the rock that Moses split in Arabia. Notice, amazingly, Arabia. Because Moses was a type and shadow of the last Moses. And that last Moses is the prophet Mohammed. Hands down. Now, Moses, he split a rock on another occasion. But he violated God's word because he was told to speak to the rock. And that would glorify God. Why? Because it was a picture of the next Moses, the prophet Muhammad, speaking to the moon and the moon split. Moses was supposed to speak to the rock, but he failed and he was punished. Oh, he was punished and he was not allowed to enter into the promised land because he was supposed to speak to the rock to be that pre picture of what the next Moses was going to do. And he spoke to the moon and the moon split. All right. So. We see that there is an anointing on this Deuteronomy 18.18 18 prophet that was on Moses and on Solomon in regards to splitting. Now let's look at the wisdom of Solomon in 1 Kings chapter 3 verse 16. Then came there two women that were harlots unto the king and stood before him. And the one woman said, Oh, my Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house. And I was delivered of a child with her in the house. And it came to pass the third day. Now, we know this is a picture of Jesus. After that, I was delivered that this woman was delivered also. So these two women represents two religions, the religion of Islam in the religion of Christianity. The religion of Islam has the living son. We believe that Jesus hasn't died. We believe God rescued him. And in Christianity, they have a mixture. They believe that Jesus died, but then he rose again. This is why the baby that was dead was planted on the woman who had the living child. Because in Islam, we believe that Jesus did not die. And so this is a picture of Christians trying to force the dead son on us Muslims. And we refuse to believe that lie. Going on. And this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it. She smothered it. Now, that is going into using too many blankets, or some people believe the weight, her body weight. She smothered the child. And I look at that, at how the Christians smothered Jesus. They made him a God when he's a man, when he's a prophet. Peace be upon him. And they are the cause why Jesus has to die as the firstborn at the last day. And that is a picture 
of the killing of the firstborn in Egypt. Now, that's a whole nother message. Check out that message. Okay, the killing of the firstborn. But I'm going to go on. And she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while thine handmaid slept and laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I arose in the morning to give my child suck, behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son which I did bear. And the other woman said, Nay, but the living is my son, and the dead is thy son. And this said, No, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. Thus they spake before the king. Now, I truly believe with all my heart that Paul is the founder of the Christian church, and the church does not have Jesus as their Messiah. They have Paul. Okay, I truly believe that the Muslims, we have the real Jesus, okay, Prophet Isa, the one who never associated any partners with God. We have the true Messiah. The church don't have Jesus. The church has Paul, okay. A story is Potiphar and Joseph, and if you think about that story, when Potiphar's wife was molesting Joseph and seducing Joseph, Joseph ran and she held his garment. She did not have Joseph or Jesus. What did she have? She had Paul, okay, who is Potiphar, the wolf in sheep clothing. Now, that's right there something I bring out. I don't hear nobody else bringing this out. But I know for a fact that the church don't have Jesus. All these churches that have Jesus' name on them, they don't belong to Jesus. They belong to Paul. Just like Potiphar's wife, Joseph had nothing to do with her. That was all Potiphar or Paul. Going on. Verse 23. Then said the king, the one saith, this is my son that liveth, and thy son is the dead. And the other saith, nay, but thy son is the dead, and my son is the living. Now, verse 24 is a picture of the prophet, Mohammed, peace and blessings be upon him, okay, because the prophet Muhammad destroyed all of the idols in Christianity. He tipped over Mary. And he tipped over Jesus. Why? Because he said, neither one of them is God. And this prophet, like Moses, is going to destroy the firstborn. Just like Moses. Okay? He played a part in the killing of the firstborn. What is this? We are destroying Christianity's idolatry. And the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, he destroyed not only Mary and Jesus as the idols in Christianity, but he also destroyed the whole trinity. The prophet Muhammad, I see him in the story of David and Goliath. He was the man that came against that Philistine with neither a sword, okay? He came at him with the stone, and that stone is the Quran, okay? So there's many types and shadows through the Bible. Y'all need to reread the Bible. There's so much in the Bible. You are neglecting. There's so many stories of what we're going through today, okay? The story of Adonijah, the story of Absalom, all those are pre-pictures of the hugest idols being destroyed, okay? Christianity has taken the sun, even though 
Allah has no sons and they made him a God. The same story is seen in the sons of Eli. Why was the sons of Eli destroyed, Hophni and Phinez? Why was the ark captured? Because Eli was putting his sons above God Almighty, the Father. And that's exactly what they're doing in Christianity. So the king said, bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king. See, there's that anointing of splitting. It's with Solomon. It was with Moses. And now it's on the prophet Muhammad. When he looked at the moon, pointed his finger towards it, and divided the moon in two pieces. Wow. Okay, this is a picture of the Gentile messenger that was spoken of in Deuteronomy 18, 18. You can't get around it. The prophet Muhammad is the prophet like Moses. Going on, verse 25. And the king said, divide the living child in two and give half to the one and have to the other. Then spake the woman whose the living child was unto the king. For her bowels yearned upon her son. And she said, O oh my Lord, give her the living child. And in no wise slay it. But the other said, let it be neither mine nor thine, but divided. That's Christianity. You know, Christianity is full of hypocrites. We have a religion that believes Jesus Christ is the Messiah. We don't agree with everything the Christians say about him. But here we have a Christian nation today supporting Israel, killing the Palestinians, the Muslims. We all believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah except the Israelis but here we have a Christian nation helping the Israelis kill a nation of people that believe Jesus is the Messiah. That is hypocrisy. That is what I call the devil's advocate. Okay, America has been the devil's advocate. Now, I know most people, even if they don't agree with everything else I'm bringing out, I'm sure they agree with that. Verse 27. Then the king answered and said, Give her the living child, and no wise slay it. She is the mother thereof. See, Jesus is the Messiah of Islam. He is the true Messiah. Okay? And in Islam, we have the true Messiah. In Christianity, you want to know what they have? They have the Zunk. They have Paul. That's who they have. They have Potiphar. They have the wolf in sheep clothing. They don't have Jesus. Joseph didn't lay with Potiphar's wife. And Jesus refused to lie in Christianity and associate any partner with God. Jesus could not have anything to do with Christianity. Okay. So going on. Verse 28. And all Israel heard of the judgment. Which the king had judged. And they feared the king. For they saw that the wisdom of God. Was in him. To do judgment. Now the prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. Was one man. That has started the fastest growing religion today. Whether you agree or whether you disagree, it is the truth. And I also, I want to show you something that a Christian scholar, he brought out, okay? And he told us the truth that the only prophet of history that can be compared to Moses remotely is Mohammed. 
And this dictionary is by James L. Dow, a Christian scholar. Okay, I recommend that you get this tiny dictionary. It's tiny, but it is powerful. And it reads, the only man of history who can be compared even remotely to him, Moses, is Mohammed. Okay, so I encourage you to deal with reality. Jesus did not do what Mohammed did. Peace and blessings be upon them both. Now I want to go through the Quran. The mountains and the birds praise God along with David. God commands them to do so. God made David a vice generate, a title that the Quran otherwise gives only to Adam. Now, David was a picture of the prophet Muhammad. Is it a coincidence that God told Muhammad to remember David? And I'm going to get that scripture for you. This is going to be Quran 3817. Be patient, O prophet, with what they say. And remember our servant David, the man of strength indeed. He constantly turned to Allah. Now the Christians want to say that we have plagiarized the Bible. And they say we copy from the Bible. Well, in the Quran, when it talks about praising God, praising Allah, it goes on a whole nother level. Now, this is going to be Quran 34 and 10. We bestowed our favor upon David. We commanded, O mountains, sing Allah's praises with him. And so did we command the birds. We softened the iron for him. Fashioned coats of mail and measured their lengths with care and act righteously. I am watching over whatever you do. So in the Quran, man, we go to another level. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He commanded the mountains and the birds to praise God along with David. Why? Because David was a picture of the final messenger, the prophet Muhammad, with the final call and did away with alcohol. And I give God all the praises. All the praises surely belong to him. Quran 2179. We guided Solomon to the right verdict. And we had granted each of them judgment and knowledge. We made the mountains and the birds celebrate the praise of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, with David. It was we who did all this. Now, with that being said, we have to understand that the Quran is a very, very bright book. It's like the book of Chronicles next to the book of Kings. Who is the book of Kings? That's the Torah. That's the prophets. Okay. That's the book of the Jews. Now, the reason why the book of Chronicles is right next to the book of Kings is because it is the last book. It's a picture of the scepter going from the kings of Israel to Mohammed. Peace be upon him. And in the book of Chronicles, there's details in the book of Chronicles that is not in the book of Kings. That's the truth. And it's the same thing with the Quran, my brothers and sisters. There's details in our book that's not in your book. Jeremiah 8.8 8 tells us that your Bible has corruption. That the scribes have been twisting the text and writing lies. 
And there's a warning in the Bible on if you add to it or if you take away. Now, why was that added in there? Because that was the fate of the Jews. Now, in the Quran, we have no such thing, but we have a promise that God would surely guard the Quran from all corruption. Now, today, I just proved to you that that splitting anointing was on not only Moses, but it was on Solomon, Solomon. What else I call him? I call him the Gentile messenger. I call him the donkey of the Bible that taught. I call him the Samuel. The man who spoke by revelation. Oh, when the prophet Muhammad spoke, it was a revelation of God. He did not speak of his own feelings. I call him Lemuel. The prophecy that Solomon's mother gave Solomon, his other name Lemuel, because this prophet did away with alcohol. Okay? And I have dessert. I have dessert. Don't go nowhere. I have some dessert. This is going to be from the Bukhari 3453 3454. This is narrated by Aisha and Ibn Abbas. On his deathbed, Allah's messenger put a sheet over his face, and when he felt hot, he would remove it from his face. When in that state of putting and removing the sheet, he said, May Allah's curse be on the Jews and the Christians, for they build places of worship at the graves of their prophets. Now that is deep. That is exactly what the Jews have done and what the Christians have done. They have made churches out of the graves of their prophets. Now that is sad. No wonder he said this when putting the sheet over his face. And think about it. In Christianity, Jesus' face is everywhere. They even stole Jesus in Christianity, the Europeans, and made him white. And his face is everywhere. Even in the Israelite camps, they have pictures of their bishops all over the place. But the prophet, Muhammad, had enough wisdom not to show his face in the place. And he doesn't want his face shown in the place. Why? Because the people are making worship centers out of the graves of the prophet. Now, when I go to Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 1, this is seen in your Bible. See, the Christians, they just want to stay parked in John. They want to chillax in the book of John. But I'm going to take you to Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 1. At that time, saith the Lord, they shall bring out the bones of the kings of Judah and the bones of his princes and the bones of the priests and the bones of the prophets and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem out of their graves and they shall spread them before the sun and the moon and all the host of heaven whom they have loved and of whom they have served and after whom they have walked and of whom they have sought and key words and of whom they have worshipped they shall not be gathered nor be buried they shall be for dumb upon the face of the earth. And death shall be chosen rather than life. 
by all the residue of them that remain of this evil family which remain in all the places whither I have driven them, saith the Lord of hosts. Now the Jews have idolized their prophets. They idolized Ezra. Okay? And today they are idolizing whoever they are claiming to be the next Messiah. This is the reason why God gave the children of Israel a certain amount of time to weep and mourn for the dead. Okay? And when we look at Christianity, they are doing the exact same thing with the prophet Isa, Jesus. They are making a worship center out of the man's grave. And I thought that Hadith was spot on. Now, others may disagree, and I can agree to disagree. But when I read that Hadith, it literally struck me, and I'm going to read it again. May Allah's curse be on the Jews and the Christians for they build places of worship at the graves of their prophets. By that he intended to warn the Muslims from what they, the Jews and the Christians, had done. And that's why we respect the prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. We don't have his face in the place, okay? And we'll put a little light over the face. We're not showing his face. He put a towel over his face. He wasn't a selfie prophet, okay? He wasn't one of those. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.